Our message today is that the government and peak bodies like the MLA simply need to do the right thing and do the smart thing. They need to listen to their conscience, transition away from live export and support the smarter alternative, a proud Australian chilled meat trade that saves Australian jobs. We've had an overwhelming response from our supporters right around the world. Horrified and surprised, the Australian government is continuing to support this trade. Since WSPA launched the Humane Chain campaign, over 170,000 people internationally have taken action. In the last month alone, over 11,000 people have joined our photo petition, which you can see behind me, from over 80 countries. Places like Egypt, Brazil, Thailand, Italy, Panama, everywhere. Uh, calling on the Australian government to end this inherently cruel trade. Look, the Australian meat processing industry is one of the most heavily regulated in the world. And I'm confident that we represent the best work practices globally in the industry. Um, up until the introduction of the live export industry, local abattoirs and rural meat processing indus industries were ensured a steady supply and a regular income and a balanced rural um, economy. We've been working at basically around about 50% capacity in the recent weeks. Uh, our staff unfortunately have only been down to say three to four days over a seven to eight week period. Um, and plus other plants in the state have obviously totally closed down. Um, to us that's very important from the fact of uh, a steady trade and uh, it's certainly when you think these people have to have an income uh, to support their families um, it does affect a lot of the average working uh, people out there. There is nothing stopping the industry from following the New Zealand model of local processing exporting in a box. So I'd just like to make uh, a couple of quick um, um, uh, mentions on that when we process, product, process products from a, a processing plant like ours um, we've got five products opposed to one raw product going out and their skins, runners, um, obviously offals, you've got your uh, uh, box meat and also your carcass meat. So when you look at that opposed to one product going out um, from an economic side of things um, you don't be, have to be much of a mathematician to work that one out. In our plant particularly there's between 50 to 60 people on a process floor um, and then you've got the trans transport port people um, that transport the product um, so when you look at that we're employing all those people to do one carcass um, to get that finished product so in our view um, we believe over a period of time it should most probably be phased out and certainly it would give us the opportunity to process um, 52 weeks a year. I want to uh, bring to your attention some uh, correspondence which I have received uh, from Princess Alia of Jordan. It's not often that you get uh, written to by a princess, so I thought it was uh, uh, worth taking some note of, particularly as she has been engaged in uh, securing for both of Jordan's main government abattoirs pre-slaughter stunning for both cattle and sheep and she says I would greatly encourage you and she's written to me and, and to uh, Melissa and perhaps others but she's certainly written to us on this issue I would greatly encourage you and indeed be most grateful to you if in setting standards in legislation you can ensure that the stunning of both sheep and cattle unconscious prior to slaughter is mandatory the utmost minimising of the suffering of animals both leading up to and during the slaughter process is a key requirement of Islamic teachings. She says, you are no doubt fully aware that a significant amount of halal meat is imported into Middle Eastern countries from Australia, all of which has been stunned as part of the slaughter process. The Princess Alia Foundation has been actively encouraging the benefits of stunning to me to be more broadly embraced in the Middle East. It would greatly assist our efforts were the Australian Government to mandate standards that have been scientifically proven to reduce suffering as well as having growing religious acceptance. And uh, I want to acknowledge the, the work of the uh, 
uh, World Society for the Protection of Animals, uh, both in relation to this issue and getting together over 170,000 signatures around the world from uh, 80 countries is a fine body of work, and also your, your work on behalf of animals on other issues as well. We are pleased to be here to have the opportunity to receive this petition, uh, and it is one of the things which uh, we will certainly bring to the attention of the Minister uh, and also to the attention of the Caucus Working Party which is uh, looking at live animal export issues and for my own part uh, I have found both the uh, animal welfare and economic arguments in favour of a move away from the live export trade towards domestic processing here in Australia as New Zealand has done to be compelling.